welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK, and today we're going to learn about some ridiculous shit in the world of Warhammer 40k from Bricky, a near lifelong fan of Warhammer. But before we get into today's episode, if you enjoy the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous and consider supporting the podcast. If you do, you get access to our Discord, uh, you get behind the scenes stuff like bloopers if they happen, some real special spicy posters that have lots of abs and just real classy shit. Uh, there's also a Imperium Coon comic that is, uh, right now I believe it's on the second batch, and that second batch is exclusive to uh, Patreon members, but it will be available to everyone for free at AdeptusRidiculous.com a little bit later, uh, so definitely patreon.com slash adept is ridiculous and consider supporting the podcast bricky uh merch and the book club reminder merchandise orchidate.com we have shirts we have hoodies we have doge van dyer stickers which are actually almost out we're gonna Ooh. reorder we're gonna order some soon but if you don't want to wait also if you spend over 75 bucks in the u.s you get free shipping um, I do want to do dice as well as more merch. However, I'm having some slight issues with a with a hiring problem and a dice problem. So until then, that's what you got. Buy it anyway, because we love money. As for the book club, uh, we have the we first do. <laughs> of the trilogy uh, from Aaron Dembski Bowden of Soul Hunter of the Night Lords. Uh, DK, you still enjoying it? Oh, man, it's so chef's kiss. I'm down to, like, the last three hours in the book, and I'm just like, oh, I'm not sure I want this to end yet. Um, uh, don't worry, you got two more books. Uh, that's true, that's true. But I uh, highly recommend you make sure you give that a listen on Audible. We will be doing an episode on that come early August. So, DK, speaking, yes. speaking of Imperium Kuhn comics and the Skull of Progenium... <laughs> Uh, and the the excellent, excellent action that has been put together. Um, Shy, I'm not quite sure the name of the person you hire for that, but whoever you did did a. That's the, that's my favorite. Action. It's really good. Yeah, it's uh, the orc really one is like the orc one's like fun, but it's also a little more concise. That one's just it's just really good. Is it noodle? No noodle or new? I always at first I said noodle, and then I was like, no, it it need the second O. Because it's spelled N O D L E, and I was like, "Noddle, noodle." No, no, Whoever you are, noodles. you're doing you're doing God's work. You're doing really the emperor's work. Oh right, the emperor's work. Sorry, I don't want to turn this into a chaos promotion. Yes, let's not do that yet while we're reading the Night Lord's book. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's technically not an <laughs> it's a parody. Ah, yes, uh, because of course, it's a parody. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. uh, nods <laughs> head. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Check. <laughs> but. We are going to be talking a little bit more about the Skull of Progenium today. Ooh. In a different avenue, we're going to be talking about assassins. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the assassins that'll just straight up steal someone, throw them on a boat, and hopefully you survive the boat. And if you do survive the boat, great. You're an assassin now. Awesome. That's okay. A, well, not quite that easy. It's, it's great. You get to now be in training for assassin. It's not, it's not actually, it's like oh. applying for college, except the application process is Fortnite about to get down. Uh, 10 <laughs> oh, million no. kills on the board right now just wiped out a full planet with Exterminatus. It's like that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's the old Chug Jug. Yeah. The old Chug, I, I unironically think the Chug <laughs> Jug remixes are fucking hilarious. I, oh, I, I've only heard a little bit of the original one, and then I, I threw my monitor out the window, so I haven't heard any of the remixes. Uh, I just know because you're bits old. And bobs. Well, yeah, but still, it, you make it sound like it's a masterpiece, right? I, w I was about to pull off like a, a SpongeBob reference, and then I forgot that you're old. <laughs> oh, come, rude. <laughs> rude spongebob is for lose oh god everybody's gonna hate me in the comments there was there's literally an episode where mr krabs wakes up and he's really tired and the background music is just you're old <laughs> oh, oh no i'm surprised that hasn't been used on me yet with all the boomer shit that i say yeah but i have to you have to make up for all of me and shy zoomer shit oh 
Even though, even though, what, what, we're only like a, like a 45 year difference or something. 45 year difference? 425, oh, you oh, dick. 425. I thought you said 45. I was like, what? How old do you think I is? How young am I? <laughs> yeah, or how young are you? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Talk about the assassins. Speaking of killing old people, let's talk about the assassins. Whoa! So, what a hey, Dean they. Kamen. Whoa. They've, you know, Dean Kamen's pretty old. The assassins it's, are coming for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, but another reason to join the Patreon. We literally have a Dean Kamen emote in our Discord. <laughs> oh, that's the only reason you need. That's the only one. <laughs> you only have to do like the two dollar tier anyway. Get that Dean Kamen anyway. Mm -hmm. The Officio Assassinorum, O F F I C I O, Ofi or I guess you could say Officio or Officio, one of those two. Assassinorum. There is both a lot and also not a lot of lore on the assassins. Um, they do enjoy the concept of, hey, we only know what the Imperium kind of knows, and a lot of our history and lore of the genre of 40k is based around Imperial records, and they obviously keep a lot of this quiet. <laughs> yeah, they're assassins. I imagine they don't want to go around um, telling everyone that they exist, what they do, who they've gone after. I, I, Yeah, I imagine the assassins want to keep their shit quiet. They do, and they keep it real quiet. Because ironically, almost every faction has assassins of some kind. Even like Space Marines have oh. snipers, and you know, like like eliminators or uh, guards have assassins. Even even orcs have commandos, spelled with a K. Orc <laughs> assassins. They they have a special rule called the throat slitters. Oh, okay. Their their main orcs they have like, like a little. Weird. You got a little war boss guy. His name is Boss Snickrot. It's it's pretty great. I would almost imagine that the orcs wouldn't like assassins because like, they seem more than... like they're a little, a little sneaky and they're a little eh, and like because a normal orc would probably just want to be like, "Yo, like I'm gonna go up to you, I'm gonna headbutt you in the mouth, and then I'm gonna gather up all your teeth after I rip your head off or something." Uh, other orcs don't like them a whole lot because of that. They still get mm -hmm. a lot of fighting, and also they wear like Splinter Cell head headgear, which is kind of fun. <laughs> An orc wearing Splinter Cell headgear? I okay, that makes for a cool mini. I think they're actually quite strong in the new codex, <laughs> oh. which is which is very <laughs> exciting to me. Um, but they they actually look pretty dope. Shy has a picture right there. The, the Splinter oh. Cell headgear and stuff—they're they, pretty dope looking. <laughs> Wow, that is not as goofy as I thought it would look on an orc. That actually looks pretty. That actually looks pretty cool. Yeah. It gives them like a little Rambo vibe. Kind of reminds me of the Catchin. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the assassins, of course, every faction has their assassins, but the official assassinorum is like a group of nothing but assassins, and they're trained to such a degree that it makes it a little bit ridiculous. Um. We let's let's go with a classic Bricky quote. Um, the, uh, this is the Decree Assassinorum, so I guess it's just like the uh, Assassin's Creed, or a uh, Decree. Um, we do <laughs> not deter- Creed, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? It's an honor among thieves or whatever. Um, we do not determine the guilty. We do not decide the punishment. We are merely the cold instruments of the Emperor's vengeance. There is no form of death unknown to us. There is no form of terror beyond our means. There is no enemy outside our reach. We are the blade that hovers over the throat of the traitor. We are the bullet that awaits the heretic's skull. We are the poison in the throat of the alien. That's it. Pretty uh, okay. That's that pretty standard assassin shit. Sounds know. assassiny. They're they're a lot. Yeah. Ironically, the assassin's temple is a lot less. Well, they're pretty fucked up, but they're not like. They feel less zealotous, if that makes any sense. They're they're a little they're a lot more like get the job done. They don't seem like they bother with a whole lot of uh of sisters of battle level like prayers. They they're more like oh, okay. could use that time for training, I guess. Yeah. So in their off time, they're not going to be like worshiping a statue of the emperor or or reading scriptures together or singing the praises of the emperor. They're just going to be like, "Hey, we're going to go get the job done and then we're going to train." 
in our sp- in our spare time so that we can get the job done better because we're we're fucking killers. That's what I'm we sure do. that they still That's do it. some some of that. There's probably they probably like before they leave on a mission they probably like kneel down to a statue they say like some prayers and then they leave sure um but yeah they're they're not they're not they're not the sisters of battle they're not that <laughs> they're, not, they're not extremists like the sisters are that take it to the next level so the officio assassinorum uh the actual grand master of the officio assassinorum is on the high lords of terra i believe he is a high lord of terra if i'm not mistaken um so he's yeah. a pretty a pretty important figure and the person who actually started the Assassinorum was our good man, Malkador the Sigilite. Hey! He okay. was the first ever Grand Master and the founder of the Officio Assassinorum, in case you needed him to be sketchier. <laughs> I was going to say, it makes sense, because he's kind of shady. He's all pow- Well, I want to say all-powerful. He's very strong. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. The sketchy, robed... Uh, mage dude is is leading the assassins. Yeah, sure. I, I yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, I, I mean, yeah. he's just kind of like a frail old man, but he's this giga brain. Malkador yeah. is is like literally the meme of the guy whose brain is so big he's using it as a chair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's that's Malkador. He's just a guy, but he's an insane guy. He you know we talked about him with the Alpha Legion episode and how he assisted mm-hmm. all, I am Alpharius. And and in, in, that. in his growth, yeah. In his growth, in, in 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 the shadows. I was about to say I hadn't seen that Giga Brain like uh, the the meme of the guy using his brain as a chair, and then Shy posted it in chat, and I was like, ooh, okay. Yep, that's that's what he is. That's Malkador right there. Yep, agree. Um, so Malkador, oh my god, what the fuck is what that? The Shy, fuck is that? What the Holy fuck is that? What? Jesus? Why are there spider why legs? It, I was gonna say, why is it on why why is it on metal spider legs in fish tanks for its feet? Why, why does it look like a sloth? Oh, God, it is a sloth. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude, I really want models of the sloth. I I do, too, because I hate them so much. They're so repulsive and disgusting looking, but they're so strong. Ugh. It's, um, it's, it's, it's it's a bad morning. <laughs> this, this is a this is a bad morning. All right, well, well, we can we can talk more about the assassins. So when you want to become an assassin, you don't get to choose to become an assassin. You, you, the assassin temple chooses you. Yeah. Um, now, naturally, like I mentioned before, in the scholas, like, hey, Jimmy hasn't come to lunch in a couple of days. That's weird. <laughs> is he in the walls? He's like, no, nah, he's not in the walls. He's just gone. Then it's like somewhere in the far reaches of space. And Jimmy is in like triple gravity on a on a fucking boat and he's like shanking children for scraps of bread. And and then it, and then blaring in the loudspeakers, you're like, yeah, Fortnite got about to get down. Get down. Uh, we're back to Chug Jug, huh? We're back it's, to Dude, we're back, it's oh. literally a battle royale on the boat. I know, but I you, you don't have to chug jug. Can you yeah. can you imagine little Jimmy, twelve years old, in like like the temperature is a hundred and six, the gravity's been doubled, oh. he he's he's shaking his buddies for f- scraps of food and he's like crying and just really loud in the black background you just hear like yeah wiped out <laughs> Tomato Town, my friend just got down. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. That I revived so him and worse. said it's southbound. <laughs> like, did you ever watch oh, The Walking that's... Dead, DK? <laughs> Uh, I watched like the first maybe two or three seasons, and then it was just like, oof, this show is bad. They're struggling. <laughs> They're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. They were, but there's this great, there's this great part in like the fifth season or something where it's not really great, but Daryl is like is like captured, and they're constantly playing that song where it's like we're on easy street, and it feels so sweet. It's like a really sweet oh. song, but they like play it twenty four seven as like a form of torture. Right. Um. And so I'm just thinking that where, yeah, <laughs> can you imagine the drill Abbott is like on a giant stage watching the kids kill each other? He's just doing the orange kid, orange shirt kid dance. Oh, all the man. commissars are default dancing in the background while all the all the children are fucking killing each other. Mm-hmm. It, 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 if I could use a, a, a boomer reference, it sounds a lot like in Clockwork Orange where they are uh, doing that home invasion um oh shit what was the song oh was it singing in the rain that they do the whole yeah invasion and they and, do, and they <coughs> do the thing it, to the mm-hmm, old lady the dark eldar thing yeah the dark eldar thing to the old lady is it singing in the rain 
I think it's <laughs> singing in the rain. Yeah, um, and it's just I, like, oh boy, the juxtaposition is such a happy song with what they're doing is like. Oh. Stanley Kubrick would direct a great Scola Progenium TV oh. show. Oh God, yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> if you were gonna that? We're going to get someone to direct it, please. The yeah, mm-hmm. That can perfect. You, can, can you? Can, oh my God, a TV show, live action TV show. Kids in the Scola Progenium, directed by Stanley <laughs> Kubrick. <laughs> Good fucking God. <laughs> yeah, it would be the most nightmare fuel shit ever. As if the Scola was not nightmarish enough. You get Stanley Ku Kubrick uh, to do a TV series on it, and that's... Oh. I'm, ready for, I'm ready for Shy to name this episode the Officio Assassinorum Fortnite in the 41st Millennium. <laughs> The thumbnail has to be uh, one mm -hmm. of the assassins chug jugging with a like an actual like energy no. thing. No, no, I want all four of the assassins to be to be doing like the point finger during the default dance at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, make it happen, make, make it, it make it happen. Tell tell Ted to double time it. Yeah, double time Ted. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, if they don't, <laughs> then then by God. Internet, I please, please somehow animate or, or get a get a model of an assassin and make them do the default dance. Yep. You yep. you've rewarded me with my Latara pictures. I I am asking for a new <laughs> level here. Not just Latara pictures, Latara ab pictures. We got to make sure everybody's aware. You know, I didn't really mention this a lot because we didn't get a really chance. But you know, like the end of that book, she's like fucking super depressed. She's oh, like, God. she's like, well, well, I guess she's she like, would, wouldn't she? She's like barely holding on. She's like breaking as a person because of how far the, the world leaders have devolved. She's like barely surviving. It's actually really sad, but you know, but you know, fuck <laughs> that. Give me the six really, pack. <laughs> she's really sad. She's barely holding on. Everything she knows and loves is falling apart all around her. And she's just on the brink of her just like, ah, nice abs, lady. She's like looking down. At least I still have my six pack, and then she just like immediately gets fat. It's like, oh no! As like a Seinfeld said, oh. clip. As soon as you said, oh, at least I still have my abs. For some reason, I just imagined her going up to that ab window on the ship that we had and just. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> at least I still have my abs. Bam! And just. <laughs> and then she breaks the glass, and then she gets like sucked down into space. She gets spaced. Or no, her just her abs get sucked out in the space, and then just this is this this episode has gone off the rails. Okay, um, <laughs> we need to we need to get back bit. on on track. Um, so okay, so le legitimately, you are taken from the Scola. You're put on the ship. You actually are Fortnited. Um, they they do a new like numerous tests. Uh, they they increase gravity. They decrease gravity. They remove oxygen. They add different gases. They any kind of like horrible situation you might end up in either on a starship or on a on like a death world they want you to have to experience so you can understand how to deal with it when you're in the situation um makes sense most of them die obviously <laughs> yeah. um and the ones that don't die are, are inducted into the assassin's temple where it's equally like a high chance of death um i think they're a little a little more careful with them because assassins are such important figures. Right. But even so, they're still incredibly, like, you yeah. know, harsh. Um, with the exception of the Caluxus assassins, which are the blanks, the people, the psychic blanks. Oh, they're right, right, they're right. actually a lot more careful with them because blanks are rare in general. Blanks yeah. that make it to the uh, temple are incredibly rare, even for the world of 40k. Um, they're, they're actually surprisingly quiet on that one. Do 40k people like blanks a lot, or do they find them creepy? Because, like, They usually... hate them. Okay. Because I was going to say, psychers tend to get a little creepy, and they're a little off-putting to people because they're, you know, insane. Um, so I was thinking, like, maybe people actually like blanks because it's like, ah, it's someone that, you know... Uh, the psychers hate. Uh, screw those psychers. Uh. No, blanks because they have no soul. In, remember, they kind of create this aura of uneasiness. Oh, right, 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 right. So often a lot of blanks are like strangled in their cribs because they're like, I had a baby and the ba I, if I go near the baby, I want to throw up. 
So often, yeah. often people will do stuff like that, but um, which is why it's so rare to even get a blink in general that lives, and even yeah, rarer for one that can long. survive the the Fortnite. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, once all that happens, they are inducted into multiple of or multiple kinds of temples, and there's the four main temples that we know of. There's the Vindicare. The Calidus, the Eversor, and the Caluxus. Those are the four main assassins you know of. Those are the four main assassins you can actually take in the game. Uh, there are actually a couple other less notable temples, four of them. The uh, Venenum? Venenum? Ven 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 what the fuck? Um, <laughs> I was going to say, don't ask me. I, the, the, the first time I'm hearing of them. <laughs> the Venenum, whatever. All right. uh, the, the Vanus the Maoris and the uh, Temple Secretum, or Secretum. Um, okay. So there's a couple more after that. Uh, talking about the specific temples, there is the Vindicare. We'll start with them first. We know the Vindicare very well. It's the sniper guy. Um, oh, okay. He is the most classic. When you think of an assassin, you think of snipers. Very simple. The uh, Dictatus Vindicare, also known as the Maxim of the Vindicare Temple, is Exodus Acta Probot, which is the outcome justifies the deed. Ah, um, they sound fun. <laughs> yes, the the one a quote from the Vindicare assassin is one or a thousand, I will kill them all. So he's very okay. he's very yeah. very quick. Um, so the Vindicare assassins <laughs> are obviously expert marksmen. That should go without saying. Oh yeah, um, of course. They are quiet. They are silent. They are, they're very sneaky, and the idea, particularly of the Vindicare, is that they are trained heavily in stealth and evasion, and also in battlefield mapping. I want to know exactly what the best spot is to be in, yep. in order to get the kill I need. Um, sure. Often, they find the position, and they are there for days or weeks, like I in scope the whole time, and they kind of enter this weird set of like, hyper hyper um hibernation in a weird way right and then in that I, time f right oh go ahead oh i was gonna say i've i've heard that like um actual like snipers uh in like the military they'll they'll do that they'll stay in their sniper spot for like days weeks just sort of waiting for that like primo shot or like just to make sure and do reconnaissance and stuff so that i mean that sounds like it's actually like based in what an actual sniper would do like the concept of course increase into 40k time because the a sniper probably in real real life would be there for a couple of days maybe if they need to yeah uh, but they wouldn't be there for weeks i think and, and they yeah, wouldn't be there for weeks, weeks. Yeah. and not for weeks with their eye in their scope the whole time <laughs> Yeah, probably not eye and scope the whole time. Probably. Probably. I'm, They're very... I'm no military sniper, but we can assume that they probably take a break from the scope every now and then. Yeah, it makes it makes sense. And and then <laughs> yeah. at that point, you know, they take their shot from miles away sometimes. Yeah. Like actual yeah. miles. And and then they have the precision, they know the wind speeds, all that kind of stuff to just make that shot mm -hmm. slice right through the jugular from three miles away it's there's only so much i can explain about them being good shots yeah they are very good shots they are the they're 40k marksmen they <laughs> they know what they're doing they do uh they're often the actually least. employed to kill like the people who they think are hosts of demon entities like a like a human or maybe even an eldar that might have a hardcore demon chilling inside them and they try to kill them before the demon can actually manifest um, false prophets, the false members of the ecclesiarchy, very often take the bullets. Um, often just one shot, and then they leave, and yeah. that's that. They often have their own ship, um, or or they have someone piloting it that's like waiting for them in with a, like a super hardcore stealth ship. Um, the Vindicare Assassin, another one. This guy's quote, his name is Vindicare Assassin Cognomen Designate L11V1. They obviously wow. don't really have names. <laughs> no uh, or not very often. <laughs> um, one strike from the shadows and I can change the tide of battle. It's pretty, uh, pretty yeah. simple. I mean, it's true. It's true. Uh, 
are, do their sniper rifles have any like super 40k e things or is it just kind of like uh is it like a 50 cal or something or uh well it's it's definitely a big ass bullet um yeah. <laughs> the they, the things they have are called the exodus rifle and the exodus pistol obviously the pistol is a backup um i like that i like that name an exodus rifle Ooh, exodus yeah. Let's the go. they're <laughs> handcrafted by the Mechanicum because of course they are. Of course, um, sure, sure. They never jam. They never overheat. They have never oh. failed once, uh, without wow. without the enemy like maybe blowing it up. Uh, they have oh, little sure. little computers inside of them to help manage and fix and like figure out framing. Oh shit! Um, oh shit! That's a hell of a gun. It is. Uh, it uses special ammunition constructed from, and I quote, special heavy gravity alloys to penetrate <laughs> all forms of protection. It's really good at blowing through space marine armor. Uh, it has I, an incorporated... I, I was about to ask, how does it do against ceramite plate? <laughs> it, it just it's right through it, like it's, like it's butter. Um, it uh, has a telescopic sight. It has an in integrated suppressor, often. Um... The has multiple kinds of ammunition. There are exodus rounds, which are programmed to self-destruct. Uh, if it is, uh -huh. the rounds are disintegrated as if it were destroyed by a virus and they'll never be seen again. So the bullet that you shot them with will literally not exist. <laughs> so um, there's literally no way to trace it back. It's like, oh God, he just, he got shot and there's no more bullet. Uh, there's a giant happens. hole in him and there's no yeah. bullet. <laughs> Um, there's Jeez. the shield breaker round, which overloads shields, um, and, or oh, also, hmm. uh, who would have guessed? <laughs> um, there's also hellfire rounds, which are particularly great against biomatter. They have a Incendiary entire, rounds, I assume. yeah, they have a whole vial full of like bio acids. And so once it hits you, it just kind of opens up and then it just like spreads through your body like a cancer. Oh, um, oh, oh God. <laughs> Okay, as that if was, it wasn't bad enough to get sniped. <laughs> that one alone is pretty rough. Uh, yeah. There's also the turbo penetrator round, which I find the funniest oh, fucking what name. The f <laughs> uh, it's it's a two-stage <laughs> charge. It has like a needle kind of thing in the front. And uh -huh. then once it goes through, it'll then have like its second round. And then it goes boom. <laughs> there's no kill like overkill. All right, sure. Um, you can also tell that I've been reading the Night Lord because when you were talking about the armor piercer, I was like, "Oh, how's it do against ceramite plate?" And then, and then he's like, "Oh no, it's a, it's got a hole in them. They're dead." <laughs> yeah. It. The uh, that is. I mean, the Vindicare, as cool as he is, tends to be a tad bit like I don't want to call him boring, but he's very vanilla. He's a sniper. Um, he's he's only interesting when he pulls the trigger. That's when you get the the spice. Right. Vindicares are humorously referred to as orc snipers by the community and sometimes in lore. Like if Inquisition gets someone killed among space marines or guard or something, people just say, hey, orc snipers got him. Don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, Shy. I didn't know that. That is, that is, that's pretty great. I, uh, I like that little tidbit of lore. Obviously, uh, they also have like that black skin stealth suit. The suit mm -hmm. is is known as Sin Skin, which allows him to like have a chameleon laced material and it lets him blend in with his environment. Um, okay. It kind of like changes colors to assist where he as he's at. It right. also helps him against poison gas. Allows him to move very quickly. Obviously, it's like a skin suit, so it's very very movement freedom. Yeah. Um, also, he has the spy mask, which. It, imagine just having like a like a giga brain computer in your face. That thing could do whatever the hell it wants. It doesn't even matter. I mean, if if you got a computer in your rifle, I would I was imagine that their uh, their helmet and mask has some pretty pretty choice shit in it. Uh, shy. I if Doge Vantire required all ripped ass <laughs> dudes to wear skin tight black leather, you know. You know, he only ever sold the women as concubines, so I don't think he sw he, he swung that way. Um, let's, I would, let's be I would, I would not put it past him though. Not Doge Van Dyer probably didn't require all ripped ass dudes to wear uh, skin tight black leather, but as as far as I'm aware of Doge Van Dyer's uh, lore that we've made, it's just they they don't wear shoes. 
wore socks. <laughs> All the assassins had to wear no shoes. Yeah, they're just barefoot. You know, it's like, but, 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 but we need, how are we going to sneak through? And he's like, no. No shoes. <laughs> no. No. You t let me take the pictures of your feet. Let me put them on wiki feet. <laughs> Listen here, a temple assassin one two three three seven four hitman forty seven. Give me your feet. <laughs> so the the, ne the next assassin, <laughs> the next assassin is the Caladus assassin, also known as DeviantArt's favorite. Um, oh. This is quote to assume the shape of the accursed and deliver death from the purity within you. That is to be Caladus. That is the Dictatus oh. Caladus. These are mainly women. Um, I, I don't know if they're all women, but they're definitely mainly women. Oh, and is is this where M Shen is from? This is M Shen's temple, correct? Okay. Shy posted a picture, and I was like, "Oh, I I, I see what you mean by DeviantArt's favorite." But I was like, "That's M Shen. That is she M Shen. Killed Conrad. She did. Um, so the Callous Assassin are known for." Deception in terms of trickery and also uh, espionage. They actually have Jesus Christ, shy. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I am a boss. We're you alone, to do... <laughs> shy. I'm trying to do an episode we're, here. We're trying to do an episode. Here. <laughs> you're you're just as off the rails as we are. You're way more off the rails than we are. We were just talking about Doge Van Dyer's affinity for, you know, naked feet and, and shies out here with... How would you describe that? I don't... I'm not You're even You're probably gonna... seeing it on the screen, everyone, so you can you can make your own based judge. Uh, Shy, if you're going to do anything, on the bottom left-hand corner, I see a Patreon link. You, you increase that. You give them the sauce. Oh, God. By God. Anyway, um, like I was saying, so they're definitely into the deception of uh, body changing drugs as well as their suit. So the thing about okay. the Calodus is that often women, they don't have that ponytail and they have like a neural, like little, little pew pew gun. It's like a neural analyzer yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever the hell it's called. Um, and then they also have their big knives. But the idea is that with their suit and their drug known as polymorphine, it allows them to literally shapeshift. Oh, as soon as you said polymorphin, I was like, oh my God, they're shapeshifters. Oh yeah, my God, that's- They are that's literally really shapeshifters. They, they actually change into men, women, even sometimes orcs, even though that's, that's much more rare and much more difficult to pull off because of their size. Mm -hmm. uh, but they often will change into the look of a, like a guardsman general or a traitor general or any of these kinds of things and they will constantly do that and they will be in a, like a position for sometimes years like two oh. to five years of like like they they become brutus they they're oh. brutus for a long time and when they're finally alone they get to do a shank <laughs> that is that is the long con that is deep undercover Ooh. It's not just that, but like it's also Eldar, Tau. The, the, oh. They can change into tons of different people, and through their like research and knowledge of the alien combined with their ability to so easily shapeshift, they're able to adopt that appearance for such a long time that they don't need to really worry about it anymore, and then they can kill their target and then leave. It's, apparently, it takes extremely strong will to control it. It's very painful. It's it's very mentally damaging, and that's yeah. why it's only used for assassins. Yeah, I would imagine it is pretty rough to go through since you are literally reconfiguring your entire body and changing the bone structure of yourself. So, yeah, I I, I imagine that would fuck you up a little bit. Sure, sure, a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, a little bit. Yeah. People like them a lot as a way to get rid of chaos cults. That's probably their biggest and most useful thing is that a chaos sense. cult is springing up on a world. They go in there, they kill all the leaders, and then they don't have to exterminate the planet or something. Mm -hmm. um, or they kill them before, say, a uh, a major like demon incursion. Mm -hmm. um, as we are aware, and as you know, uh, M. Shen is the name of the most famous Kalos assassin who killed Conrad Kurz. Grant yep. him um, definitely was allowed to be killed by Conrad Kurz. Oh, absolutely. Uh, because, yeah. of course. But at the same time, uh, did not last long after that. 
No. <laughs> uh, due to the effects of one Soul Hunter. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and didn't... Granton put up a fucking fight. Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean... It's kind of hard to put up a fight against a... Uh, against a Night Lord that knows... Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to trick the Night Lord. It's kind of hard to trick an Astarte once he's already got his eyes on you and you're, like, fighting him. Yeah, but it's it's kind of nutty to the point where when someone can unload full auto bolter fire on you and the person is just dipping and diving with, like, a half inch from every single shot. Like, she's made of fucking fog. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Also, you know that sword you see on her arm? Yes. That's known as a Catan phase sword. Oh. It is it is a living metal weapon made from the necrodermis of the necrons. Oh shit. I mean, I guess once you said living metal, I should have made the connection, but Oh, really? Mhm. Mm it was it was Damn. excavated a long time ago by some mechanicus boys, and they actually have it made of the necrodermis living metal of the, for the Catan, which is uh, you know, either they don't know what they picked up or they are doing some real heresy but like i mentioned before <laughs> the assassin temples are a lot more get the job done so uh, does the does the living metal sword thing work the same way that like necron skin works like can you not break it and it'll just always like re regenerate or i'm assuming um though at the same time no one probably was able to break it to begin with because it's so goddamn because they're so goddamn fast Fair so enough, yep. if they if they kill a damn assassin, it's most likely not through the use of breaking their blade, but more like obliterating yeah. them or some things they have to. Yeah. Um, okay. Do they actually leave death cards too? Oh, they have calling cards too. Well, that's cool. Okay. They they tend to place the calling card in a in a use for terror, and the calling card projects a hologram of the victim's face on the moment of death. With a looped recording of their screaming. Oh my god. That's so such a it's, fucking 40k thing to do. I know. Oh they want to get the terror out there. Like, you guys got to yep. make sure you don't do heresy. Yeah. Calling card. They'd fit right in with the Night Lords, which is ironic to say about uh, about them since, you know, M. Shen is the one that killed Conrad. But that's that's that seems like a Night Lord thing to do, where you just inflict the terror and everybody's afraid of you now and everybody's gonna fall in line because oh fuck, I don't <laughs> I don't want my dead screaming face to be on repeat when they find me. Fuck that. Like Fuck that. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fuck bullshit. <laughs> uh, so the next <laughs> temple we're gonna talk about is the Eversore Temple. These are the re Temple Boys. Um <laughs> that I have no better way to describe it. <laughs> um, sow the seeds of damnation and I shall reap the souls of the tainted or quote unquote, Whoa. fear me for I am your apocalypse is the dictatus ever sore. These dudes, lords. <laughs> these dudes, I know these dudes are the goddamn guys that get drugged up like mad and are put oh. into cryo sleep. Um, I don't remember if I told you specifically about this, but these guys are basically clockwork oranged. They are are mentally like just barraged with death, destruction, horror, gore, pain, ecclesiarchy, hymns. And then they are shoved with as much LSD and and <laughs> toxins and murder death shit that they can stick inside of them. They're given a gauntlet made of needles and a gun made of needles. And then they are put in, they are drugged up to such a degree where they are a gigantic walking drug bomb and they are put into cryo sleep. And then they are dropped okay. from orbit somewhere where they need to get their job done. And then they break out of it, start like screaming at the top of their lungs and murder everything in sight. Oh boy, this this that that definitely sounds like some uh, some scola shit with like the clockwork oranging them, pumping them full of drugs. But holy shit! So you wouldn't use these guys if you knew that your allies were in range because it sounds like they're just so unstable and they're so. I mean, D DK. <laughs> they're born and bred to ki to only want to kill and murder and maim and destroy. Like, although... DK, did you actually just tell me 
yeah. slash ask me if the Imperium was worried about friendly casualties. You know, as soon as I said that, I was like, mm -hmm. I guess they probably might not give a shit. Me probably... memes, aside, memes aside, you are right. You are correct. Um, hey, wow. Imperium caring? Really? It's a, it's a little, it's a little bit. A little bit. So the concept is that these guys forego all stealth obviously and <laughs> no. and their their job is like okay there's a whole chaos cult down there i want you to kill all of them like no, i don't want anyone to come back <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and to the point where that's that's the idea is that they kill everything in sight in their complete psychotic rage and they're in, they're moving at the speed of light because they're so goddamn you know drugged out their yeah. giant claws just rip out like chunks of people's flesh while at the same time spitting poison from the needles they have needle guns they're I, I mean it's it this is the most straightforward besides the vindicare of them all where it's just ain't nobody <laughs> ain't nobody gonna notice if no one's left to notice <laughs> yeah. does the does their what does their needle gun do is it just a poison gun that just spews poison while they just rip and tear and and all that. It, it's got a, it's like a executioner pistol. It has multiple options. You can either fire it as like a bolt pistol or a needle. And the needle, when it hits the victims, uh, it blasts open and it cracks inside their body and it hits them with neurotoxins. Um, uh. The the gauntlet does the same. Um, and oh. the, it still does have a power sword though too, in case they need to stab like um, space sure. marines. They sound like the human variation of like. Uh, what is it? The destroyer cult for the um, oh the Necrons, uh, yeah. For the Necrons, so that just all they care about is destroying everything. Just everything gets so blit. Although the destroyer cult might do it at a more <laughs> efficient level, since they want to just all of it's dead. They're like the, the the ecosystem, the ground, the water, the atoms in the air. Um, but still, the <laughs> I mean, after all the drugs these guys have been pumped with, they might think the same. So I I don't know. They, they do. And cool. what's best is that, you know what happens if they die? They blow up in a cloud of poisonous gas. You did it. Well, not yeah! quite. Uh, oh. Sort sort of. They, they blow up in a thermonuclear explosion. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. What is there like a... a, a, a... <laughs> oh, like Predator. They, yep. have, they have a little predator gauntlet that just. I, I think I, I'm assuming it's a much larger explosion. It's probably not like a nuclear explosion, but it's probably a much larger one. Like, uh, unlike predator, a predator explosion was big, but I think they can like level level like half a town. Oh, um, boy, that's a the the explosion. idea is like yeah they've they've got like a bio bomb in them, and if they die, like life signs negative, deploying bomb. <laughs> a bomba. Big boomba. Damn. If if Ooh. the Callous Assassin was was extreme booba, this one's extreme bomba. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> big bomba versus big boba. Boba. Yep. Or booba. Sorry. Boba. I got my memes mixed up. I, I got the wrong. my memes mixed up. Sorry. Boba these sorry. nuts. Anyway, as I was saying, wow. uh, that's the Eversaur. And I was gonna be like, man, I'm kind of thirsty, boba, and now I'm just like, nope. Be kind of thirsty for some no. boba, TK. <laughs> no, you got a little like, thirsty nah, for some nah, boba. Nah, you wanna, you anymore. wanna put some dudes in some black leather and <laughs> check out their feet pics, huh? Oh, stop! <laughs> I don't filter I my coffee everything. through beans. I filter my coffee through toes. Oh <laughs> no! I'm just imagining. We made like the feeding this? gallery. There's no, there's no god. <laughs> The emperor there wanted no no god. no god, and I'm saying there's no god. God has abandoned this podcast. It's true. These uh, nightmare vision goggles. Everything looks everything exactly looks the same. same. Yeah. Ooh, no. How, I, ooh, I wonder how. I wonder what she's gonna put up on the screen for all. This. Probably just the probably things just, that she's using right now, including yeah, the, the sad just bunny. Yeah, yeah. Is that bunny. What is that? Come Rabbit. On. You don't. That's that's a. You don't know the Animaniacs. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, but although it's been a while, it's been a while. Sorry, I, I hate to admit it, but the Animaniacs are a little on the old side now, aren't they? They are, aren't they? Yeah. Unfortunate. 
Anyway, <laughs> so the last big temple we want to talk about is the Caluxus Temple. All right. Let's that which is unknown and unseen always command the greatest fear. The Eldar, Eldar, the mm -hmm. people who butt fucked a god into existence, describe them as the purest form of evil. Whoa. Also, I was going to say, it wasn't confirmed that it was just butt fucking that, you know, brought. I, I know it's a lot more than butt fucking. Yeah. I'm just clearing it up for any new viewers. You know, it wasn't just. There was a lot more to it than just. Anyway, sorry. I don't know why that immediately. See what you've done to me this episode? <laughs> this is not my fault. You signed up for this. <laughs> this is your fault. This is somehow, this is your fault. Anyway, go go ahead. Keep going about the uh, unseen. Uh, the the most evil says, beings according to the Eldar. This is the, the blanks ones, right? This is the, the pariahs, the, the blanks. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Th this whole fortress, because because each temple, like they're called temples because they're literally temples. Mm -hmm. Each temple is actually like, oh, I love that picture that Shai posted. Ooh. That's the oh, newest God. one in the in the new codex. Yeah, that's, like that's terrifying. It's pretty horrid. <laughs> it's pretty horrid. The Whoa. the the blanks basically have that thing on their head that enhances their power of their innate like blank ability. And so oh, no. it's a it's a battle helm that can either muffle or focus the power whatever that's required. So oh. if they want their their aura to just be at max, they can do that or lower it if they're within the area of uh, of like you know allies. Oh, okay. Um, so now, they, or they could lower it if they want to be like kind of sneaky and sneak up on you, so you don't feel their aura, and then just crank that shit to max and just blow your face off. Often being in the same room as a blank is hard enough. It's very difficult to even be in the same room as one in general. This one can turn it up to the point where it can literally drain the like the soul of a psyker. And then and it Whoa. uses it to power its giant helmet and it has a big laser and it shoots you with it afterwards. <laughs> Damn! Okay, is it that? Uh, I'm. Assuming, should I just post another picture? Of the giant lasers, like the eye thing. The eye the thing, yeah. Oh, if you God, see in the that's... first picture, he's kind of like sucking the energy into the eye, uh, the big laser. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh that 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 sounds like it'd be horrifying to 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 be in the same room with that. But that sounds like a really dope attack. Like it all is the energy in the room just siphons in there, and then he just he just the dude you. The dude like literally sucks your soul, and then he uses oh. it, to, and then he uses your soul to kill his, your friends with his gun Damn. face. So these guys are literally big suck. They are huge suck. They're actually so <laughs> incredibly unpleasant to be around that in the tabletop you can only like hit them on a six, I think. Uh, Whoa! Which is, even it's I nine. know that's kind of wild. Yeah, like a space marine or like even a custodian that hits on twos. You can only hit him on a six because he's just he creates this aura of sheer uncomfortableness. And it's so impossible to be near him, particularly against psychers. Often psychers will like pull their eyes out or like rip their throat out in an oh. attempt to not be near it anymore. Because like this is literally worse than torture. I would rather murder myself. This is the worst oh. thing ever. So you, if if you knew you were going to fight some psychers, you would feel the whole shitload of these guys. Uh oh well, I mean, there's not many of them. This is probably the least common temple oh. of them all because of their their use. But oh, that's true because blanks are rare, and blanks that survive all this assassin stuff are even rarer. You exactly, rare. and and often by having them in the battlefield, it makes other allies just. Want to like a guardsman would would rather kill himself than be near this thing. I think there's actually a story of one of of a guardsman who ran ahead and he entered a room with like a, to fight Eldar or something, and then this guy was there. And the moment he saw it, he had this thing on full blast, and the guardsman immediately took his last gun and put it under his chin and shot himself because he he was just like, "This is better." Blam. Damn, like. <laughs> Couldn't couldn't you just like run away from the blank and just get it, out of it its was, range instead of killing yourself? Holy crap! It was a suitable choice. He pref Damn. he preferred that. Oof. They're they're they are 
considered the most evil because their very existence makes people want to die. They're like, and that's not, and that's that's their wild. regular nature. Then you turn, then you crank that shit onto ultra blast. <laughs> oh, so they're like the worst. The, the Eldar described them as pure evil. The Eldar. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. The, 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 the ones that uh, brought Slanesh in think they're the most evil. The, I guess that's, that's all you often need to know they're, about these motherfuckers. Often they're pretty good against demons, if I'm not mistaken, too. Because demons that, can't, that like, sense. they're like a warp entity. And mm -hmm. so being around this dude, you just, they just can't handle it. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they're they're incredibly rare. For every one of these guys, there's like four of the other temples. They're incredibly rare, but when they're around, um, like on the tabletop, if you're near, if a psyker is near one, they get like minus two to all their rolls. Um, <laughs> they can never be affected by psychic abilities in any way, shape, or form. And they're also, um, I think, if they attack psychers, they're they get like forty bonuses. Oh, naturally. naturally. How much does a blank cost in the tabletop? Because it sounds like they're really good, but I would imagine they'd have to be like really expensive because you got to factor in that they're lore wise, they're supposed to be super rare. Um, uh, every assassin there's... is a hundred points. Is that a lot? Uh, that's it's pricey, but for what they can do, it can sometimes be worth it. Uh, for example, also, will they will they fuck up your allies? Uh, no, they they don't have. Well, I think okay. they do fuck up ally psychers. I think. Oh, okay. Um, but not like so, if you if you have like an imperial guard that's around it, it's not like oh yeah. No. Do no. a saving throw or something. That's that's never fun for the terms of uh, of lore or, yeah. or of tabletop. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But the like the uh, assassinorum, like the vindicare, for example. Um, he's like a great sniper and he, his gun with the shield breaker rounds ignores an invul save. So it's very often if you land the shot, they don't get anything for it. You do yeah. the damage and then you might even do more damage and possibly just one tap him. Mm -hmm. Um, the Eversaur is just like a, he just runs in there and, and cleaves everybody. And if you kill him, he blows up. It's pretty good. Um, cool. It's, it's fun. It's good times all around. Um, besides that, though, the only other uh, temples that are there are the uh, Venonim Temple, which is actually entirely used in the creation and construction of exotic poisons. They, well, they're fine. Sense. They're fine poisony. They, they, they're like little poison biologists. They manufacture different kinds of toxins. Okay. Um, the only people that can make poisons better or or even similar is in uh, Kamarog. <laughs> oh, Okay. Um, for the, for the ven, venom, venom, would they, would they make the poisons for the big bomba, uh, assassins? Most likely. Okay, cool. Unless, unless they do it themselves, just because that that's in their temple, but, yeah, um, yeah. there's the temple secretum, which I thought was secrete, like secreting poison. In reality, they're actually just meant to safeguard knowledge. So they keep the darkest oh. secrets, uh, hidden away. There's the yeah. When I heard their name, I thought the same thing. I was like secreting. So they've got they've got to be the poison group because they'll like secrete all the nasties. I thought so. And then there's venenum, which I guess is just venom, but it's V E N E N U M. Venenum. I don't know. Anemone. Yeah, um. GW. There's the Mayoris Temple, which was okay. actually meant for to deal with multiple targets simultaneously, which would often have them be kind. Of, they're kind of like a rogue renegade temple that would use illegal mutants and and like sometimes even illegal mutant alien hybrids oh boy, to create heresy. yeah it's super heresy they would occasionally <laughs> yeah. like use them to absorb biomass um fuck that's right this is where you can get canonical cat girls shit uh, favorite faction let's go fuck let's get those cat girls let's get those necos right okay this is where the, this is where you can do 40k Nekopara, right? And then there's the Vanus Temple. <laughs> the Vanus Temple is entirely about uh, intelligence gathering. They're your espionage and your like data hackers and sneaky spies and mm. and all those that kinds was, of people. That was a nice quick pivot away from uh, Cat. I'm I'm away. staying far well away from that shit. <laughs> good job. It's a good call. I I approve. 
Um, the uh, and so the the Vanus Temple is actually kind of fun. They often had a cons uh, a quote where it's like the cleanest kill is one that another performs in your stem with no knowledge of your incitement, which is extremely Alpha Legion sounding. Oh yeah, that is that is very Alpha Legion sort of uh, trickery and yeah. It's pretty good. There's some there's some interesting other temples. I wish they would use the Vanus and the Venom whatever temple in tabletop a bit more. <laughs> Uh, but, unfortunately, that does not appear to be the case. It's just the main four. Um, I, I will admit there was actually a wonderful little scene with an assassin in the Comrade Kurz book. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Kurz was on, like, a little pirate vessel that they found him on. And eventually, the guy found him, and uh, he was utilizing the help of a uh, like a pilot or something, right? And yeah. the entire time, he was like, hey, what's like?" Hello there. My name. You call you. My name is Gun. You're, you're gonna refer to me as Gun. Um, I'm going to kill Clever. you. When the, I'm going to kill you when this is over. But it's better than what Kurz will do to you. So do what I say, and your death will be quick. And he was like super calm and just very collected. And it was kind of cool because uh, um, once he finally found Kurz, he was just like he took his little bow, and it's like my my lord. And Kurz was all angry. It's like, you're you're not the one who's going to kill me. And he's like, oh, well, excuse me for trying then. And he pulls out two <laughs> pistols and just starts going at him. Damn. It was kind of neat. Their fight was actually really well done. He was dipping and dodging Kurz's blows with, like, insane speed. Um, but he was also not getting any good shot, any good hits off. And eventually Kurz just stuck his fucking talons in his stomach. And he's oh. like, and it's like, not you. It ain't you. You're not the ones who's going to kill me. <laughs> I know the assassin's gonna kill me. He's gonna give me that sweet, sweet vindication. Mm -hmm. That was kind of, kind of a fun little character. I liked him. He's just gun. He's yeah. like, he had like a long black trench coat doing cartwheels and flips while dual wielding pistols. It was the most like horrible Resident Evil movie <laughs> bullshit ever, but it was great. I was gonna say, it sounds like Neo. Yeah, a little, little mate. He had the trench coat too. It, it was definitely yeah. very Neo. Yep. He's, um, he's pulling the matrix, you know, doing the cartwheels and dodging bullets, but he was not the one. He was not the one. He was not the. You are not the one. Um, but that's the assassins. They they have a lot of lore, but they also like kind of don't. Their lore is a little very simple. Um, there's a couple notable assassins out and around. I'm sure if if the comments have a particular assassin they find really funny or have like a great story they want to mention, please do. Because I'm curious myself. I only really know M. Shen. Yep. I want stories on more of those fucking blanks. Those those blanks are so fascinating. Uh, they're creepy and they're weird. And I'm sure everybody hates them. But I I feel like stories surrounding blanks would be really, really dope. It would be. A little hard to tell because assassins are practically like completely unfeeling. We could probably talk more about the Sisters of Silence if we want to know more about Blanks, but that's like a whole different faction. Oh, I forgot about the Sisters of Silence. Yeah. Because they're, most... they're Blanks, right? Yeah, GW forgot about them too. Oh. Yeah. I actually so really odd. like, I actually really will like, oh, well, the Silence because they actually don't speak. Um, but oh, okay, well. it's a combination of the two. I really like the yeah. Sisters of Silence. You run them with custodians. Oh, well, that makes sense. Well, running any sister faction with the custodians makes sense, right? Because they're well, like in tabletop, you run them with the custodians, like they're actually part of the codex. Oh, okay. I thought it was just like a hey, you know, it's a it's a sister group. Of course, they're good. I didn't realize that was like literally in the co okay, cool. Yeah, it's it's good. We'll talk about them some other day though. This was the okay. assassins. So this, was this episode assassins. went off the fucking rails in the beginning, and we brought it back. <laughs> We brought it back a bit, but we're good now. We reeled it back in. This we're is, okay. This has been a fishing journey today. <laughs> I want to go fishing. You can go I fishing for your cat fishing. girls. Oh. Go go to well, your cat girl. Sign fucking me up. Cat girl of the lake. What is your wisdom? Even if cat, <laughs> even if cat girls were real, they wouldn't like you just like normal girls. Oh. That's, the the that's the a, truth hurts. Boy, that's a oh boy. I oh. I've, see, you saying that is like me running into a room with blanks. It's like this is uncomfortable <laughs> and I don't like it and death would be better. This and is now I want to die. How have you done that? Why have you done this to me? You're a blank now. You've made this. Oh, thanks, Bricky. <laughs> hey, I was referring mainly, I was referring mainly to our fan base, but I, we can if you want to oh. use it, go to town. I wasn't referring to yeah. you. 
Oh, I thought I thought it was specifically me because uh, okay, no, no, yeah, yeah, you dorks out there, yeah, you Fucking, dorks, you goddamn noids, uh, you, you <laughs> what, you noids, like the the Burger King thing or the, no, the no, Domino's like, it's like just, noids? No, it's just like nerds with like an with like a with like a joysy accent. You you you're a noid anyway. That's. So how how about how where where to, to take take us home, Bricky? Let's <laughs> get us out of here. I'm just gonna not talk like with the Alpha Legion episode and just let you keep going. <laughs> and, no, and, and, please and, don't let yeah, me. Hey, hey, here's the here's the shovel, Kriegsman. <laughs> Dig yourself a bigger hole. <laughs> I don't wanna end uh, right. my suffering, please. All right, I'm gonna bring out the Kaluxus Assassin. It'll make it quick. Um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, I should use the Vindicare. It would make it much less painful. Yeah. My name's been Bricky. Thank you for watching. You find me Bricky in places. You can find Shy and Quite Shallow everywhere in Quite Shy. And then DK who finds you there. Yeah, DK Diamant is everywhere, except Instagram. But nobody cares about Instagram, so whatever. Yeah, Instagram's big stupid. Okay, Thanks. thanks for watching. If I show up to your house tomorrow uh, with a sniper <laughs> rifle, it's just for roleplay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>